Welcome everyone to Unbound Gravel, race number two of the Lifetime Grand Prix. These women are coming off some hard fought results. At Unbound, I went so freaking hard the first three hours. Like I was like, I might blow up and detonate, but you know what, this is what it's gonna take for me to win the race to get a massive advantage onto everybody else. Please welcome Sophia Gomez Philippines! Your winner of the Garmin Unbound Gravel Race for 2022. What an incredible ride, all by herself for over 80 miles. Sofia Gomez Bichafane taking the win. Emily Newsom coming in second, 20 minutes down, and Melissa Rollins in third. I am willing to risk losing the race in order to win it. In our Lifetime Grand Prix overall standings, we have Sofia Gomez Vichafane in the lead, Haley Hunter-Smith in second, and Evelyn Dong in third. All of this training that has gone into preparing for this is definitely gonna pay dividends when we get ready to go to Utah for Crusher and the Tusher. We are now two races into the Lifetime Grand Prix, and Leah Davison has officially announced that she has withdrawn from the overall. pulled into Beaver and I was like, oh, we don't have brakes. And then I was like, oh, the AC also went out. <laughs> if we can get home. The circus has arrived. <laughs> okay, well, it looks like Lawrence is doing 42s. Let's see, is this Sophia's? Hmm, interesting, 38s. <laughs> The only questions we have as bike racers now in my life is like, do we wear a pack? And what tires are you running? Well, my name is Sarah Sturm. My title is professional bike racer. I pedal <laughs> forward. I always describe cycling as this traveling circus and a series like this really feels like it. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> Like you start seeing the same people at the same races, and it's kind of nice. Hi, which tires are you running? <laughs> Russell's running 38s, I don't know what to do. Here we are, race three, Crusher and the Tusher. It's been a part of the Lifetime family for about three years now. Burke Swindlehurst, uh, in his sadistic way, created this thing. It's gonna be a challenge, it'll be a different, different event. It's tough to say, is it a mountain biker's event? Is it a gravel rider's event? Well, there's never a perfect decision, right? Well, these are better because they have gum walls. Oh, yeah, then let's do that. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Done. <laughs> this course has three sections. The first climb. The middle, which includes a downhill and then a flat section and then another massive climb. I think what differentiates Crusher from a lot of events is obviously the mountaintop finish. You know, 69 miles and 10,000 feet of climbing and a lot of it is this loose, gnarly gravel. I mean, personally, I think between the elevation gain, the altitude, the heat, the surfaces you're gonna encounter and when you're going to encounter them, it kind of throws the kitchen sink at you out there. I'm biased, but I don't think there's another event on the planet that, that packs more suffering on a per mile basis than, than this event. Evelyn and I started racing around the same time and we're good friends. After you, darling. We've bike pack together, we've traveled a lot together. Evelyn's always been just very chill, you know, she can smile after a bad day and doesn't really take it too seriously, but she does it because she loves it and she enjoys it. I mean, I might be laid back in life, but I am very competitive. And once the gun goes off, it's just like putting yourself in that spot where you're breathing through your eyeballs 
and there's like nothing else that really satisfies that itch. Evelyn's a crusher. This style of racing, like she can definitely throw down and she makes it look so easy. Yeah, Evelyn Dung, 2019, she won Crusher in the Tusher, so she's gonna be comfortable with uh, some of those harder uphill, you know, and Crusher and Tusher's a lot of climbing. So this final climb. Well, when I heard about the Grand Prix, it really boosted some motivation for me as I was contemplating like when to end my career for racing. I guess it has some part in like just providing some good motivation for me this year with, I guess, a different kind of challenge. I have so much admiration and respect for Rose. She's an extremely hard worker. She's won Leadville twice. If this series would have happened in like 2018, 2019, I think Rose would have waxed all of us. Sophia, she's in the thick of it, you know? She's in the thick of being famous for her results. She's growing, she's embracing it all, and this is her time. The last race we did was in lovely Emporia, Kansas, uh, where I became the new queen of gravel. It's not gonna last forever. I think she feels a bit tired. My biggest threat at this race, I would say, is uh, Alexis Garda but she got COVID. So if she doesn't come here, I just have already such a huge lead. I'm actually looking really good for the series. Ooh, take this with my, any Wally's Last hand year, I didn't pre-ride anything of the course and I still won, so. <laughs> Ignorance is bliss sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I, but I did this last year. You've never been here before, Yeah. right? I've done this race twice. Cried my first time, said I never was gonna do this again. <laughs> And then one at the second time. Okay, I'm gonna get ready. I'm gonna give this to Myron. She's great. She's great. She's uh, solid. She's focused and uh, hauling ass. I mean, I think we all put pressure on ourselves. Like, I've already won two of the biggest races in the world. But in the Fuego 80K in Sea Otter, I just put myself into that last hill when I tried to pass Mo. Scarta's starting to struggle. And it even looks like Sofia's starting to struggle. Sofia Gomez Villafian, legs have blown up. Incredible. Mariah Wilson just riding away from the other two riders and the entire field here. I just kind of gave up. And then I crossed the finish line in second. And it just did not sit well with me at all. So for the next two and a half, three weeks, like every training ride, I like mentally put myself in that situation and I'm like, that's the last time I'm gonna give up like that to a competitor. I got into cycling six years ago when my coach, Carmen Small, approached me. She saw potential and she was like, I would like to turn you from a Cat 1 racer to an Olympian in four years. And I was like, mm, this woman is like bad shit crazy, but um, whatever, like let's try it. Every year I just focused on myself and you can see each year I just level up, level up, level up. A lot of my friends tell me like, oh, you kind of have this locked up in the bag. I haven't been challenged in the way that I thought I would. I think I am the clear favorite, so I just, it'd be sweet to kind of deliver on that one. Yeah, I think this race, it pays dividends to know how to race it and kind of when to let your efforts go. Like last year, I drilled it up this climb. Being a professional cyclist is never anything that I actually cared for. It was an accidental thing that happened. I never wanted to be an Olympian and here I am, you know, became an Olympian in Tokyo. I don't really give a shit if I win or not. Like what I want to know is that I gave the best performance I'm capable of and to show the hard work and the sacrifice I put in every training ride. And if you beat me, like, good for you, but I'm never gonna give up and just kinda let somebody beat me like that ever again. Race three is finally upon us, and just as the name suggests, this race is a real crusher. Climbing from 6,000 feet to 10,000 feet twice, mile for mile, this may very well be the hardest race in the series.
Who can guess what the standings will look like after the dust settles from this year's Crusher in the Tusher? So as of right now, you're currently sitting 17th overall in the Lifetime Grand Prix Series, notably absent from the Unbound 200 race. In the Lifetime Grand Prix, there are six races and only five of them count. So when I started this season, I made the predetermined decision that I would skip Unbound. It would allow me more opportunity to stay fresh and hopefully to be able to really excel in these later races. I've been racing Hannah Auto for a long time, like since high school. Like she was in Southern California, I was in NorCal. Even in college, we would race each other at Collegiate Nationals and she always kicked my ass. Like, I just, wow, she's Hannah, so good. And then I got training and then I got really fit. And it's been a long time that Hannah has beaten me. Excited. I'm really curious to see how her season goes. Her dream is in the Olympics. So she's having balance both schedules. Far up. Not worried. I think that is probably her biggest weakness. She doesn't realize how big of a deal Unbound was and that could have made her career. And I was like, well, I mean, great for me, but sucks for you. Sophia is a formidable competitor. She's always been very strong mentally and physically, and she's obviously on a high point right now. When Sophia won, she was behind at the top of this climb. That said, every rain comes to an end at some point. It's just a matter of one. Leah Davidson and Casey Armstrong are not coming. Uh, it's just sad, like, like there's so many people that apply to have this opportunity to race a series and then people aren't showing up to a race. I don't know, I just feel like the guys are fighting for this way harder than the women are. And if we're gonna fight for equality, we should show up. Um, all right, I'll grab Evan. Evan! Evan! Sophia is so pragmatic with how she thinks about things. I think she's pretty unfazed, or at least she seems that way. <laughs> but she's really like matter of fact. If she doesn't win, she'll know exactly why. And then she'll fix it for the next race and probably win that one. <laughs> well, shall we? Hour and a half? Okay, wow. I have this theory that I'm only fast because I have no sense of time and I'm always late to everything. So I just have to go really hard <laughs> to make, a, make it places on time. Oh, now we are gravel racing. Oh, I love the storm. We are best friends. We met in college. I'm so analytical, where Sarah is just racing in the moment and within the feeling that she has. So she's like willing to take these flyers and suicidal moves. And that like actually that intimidates the field more than she probably realizes. Woo, 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 woo. And she's winning! Mountain top winner! <laughs> what all kind of training goes into a series like this? Oh my gosh, I'm the worst person to ask about that. <laughs> I chose Fort Lewis College. I got a scholarship for academics. I was like infatuated with mountain sports. I did join the Fort Lewis cycling team and that was definitely one of the best decisions of my life. My like junior year, I got on a mountain bike and I was so insanely bad. No one really taught me how to do it. I just crashed a lot, all the time. I mean, I distinctly remember, because I was 22, when I like went for a mountain bike ride and I didn't crash on just like a chill like loop. And that like really sticks out. To me, I'm like just sort of like forced my way through it. I quit racing because I wasn't having fun. Dylan and I were driving home from Marathon Mountain Bike Nationals and he kind of looked at me and was like, are you having fun racing? <laughs> I was like, no. And it kind of like made me realize that I maybe needed to like step away for a little bit. 
I remember distinctly feeling like a very much a loss of identity. I mean, it's something I think everyone has to like go through at some point. And then I started doing high country mountain bike rides and I don't know, enjoying like going and riding with my friends. We would do hard rides on the weekends in the mountains and I was challenged by just the physicality of it, but no one cared if you ever finished anything except for yourself. And so I think that was sort of starting to crack open that endurance thing for me. We were like cleaning out our things and I found this little box of memories. I wrote down all my goals for life and one of them was like, become a professional mountain biker. Dylan was a huge part of like showing me all these other types of riding and like racing. And as cheesy as it sounds, like I did, I was able to like find the joy in bike racing again. Coaching definitely helps ground everything. First met Ellen when she was on the U14 during Odevo mountain bike program, and I was the coach. So I've really seen Ellen grow up. There's something really special about her and her spirit within the sport. Being in the Grand Prix, that evolution of her story is awesome. <laughs>
One element that makes this race so unique is that you start at the bottom of the mountain and you finish at the top. You know. Oh, now we can laugh because the chicken's still alive. Oh. <laughs> Honestly, my nerves are sort of gone now, so that was good. Usually I have a little cry. <laughs> right here on this bench is where I cried at Unbound. Like four in the morning, I was like, I don't want to do this. And then you just do it. The start of Crusher and the Tusher will be a welcomed change to riders after last month's hectic unbound. It's gonna be a good day. The course is running good, and yeah, it's race day. <laughs> Rose Grant, a veteran in the mountain bike community, has announced that this will be her last season racing. I wouldn't count her out just yet. Some riders fizzle out, she only gets stronger. to watch Haley Smith in this race. Thus far, she's been sitting in the shadows in this series, but currently is second overall. It begs the question, is she struggling or is she just playing the long game? I think a lot of women that I stand next to on the start line, there's that imposter syndrome of, I don't belong here, I don't deserve to be here. I come to Crusher being the defending champ, yet I'm like freaking scared of this race. Five, four, three, two, one. And here we go, our open women now on course here in Beaver, Utah, the gateway to the Tusher Mountains. As they make their way along Highway 153, we can expect to see the group stay pretty much together. That is until they leave the pavement and the first climb really begins. At that point, that is when I would expect to see a little separation beginning at the front of this race. I can settle in so well to suffering. The uphills, these climbs, this is gonna be the difference maker in this bike race. I like the feeling of pushing myself really hard. And I think you have to have some bit of enjoying that to do this. It's not easy ever. Now we're starting to see the path break up a little and some of our early leaders are beginning to emerge. Of course there's Sofia Gomez Vichafane, followed closely by Katie Smith. You've got Emma Grant, Sarah Sturm, Ruth Winner all in that front group. I think your mind gives up before your legs do so I just need to make sure I'm always the toughest one. So now we have a good look here of our leaders approaching the second aid station, and it's Sofia Gomez Vichafane and Haley Smith at the front. They were able to use that first climb to get out in front of everyone else, so now it's about 30 seconds separating our two leaders back to our third place rider, Sarah Sturm. That's your one, two, and three as they approach the long downhill section, and then of course, they'll just go right back up. So the most challenging sections of this course are still ahead of them. My overall race strategy is to match the attacks in the first half, and then if I'm able to do that, and I'm feeling strong, to try to insert myself into the race in the second half. That's where the crusher really bears its teeth. Now coming out the bottom of the downhill, our top four consists of Haley Smith, Sofia Gomez Vichafane, Sarah Sturm, and Ruth Winder. They'll get to enjoy a few miles of pavement before they start the long climb back up. going into the second climb. There's this little section called the Sarlacc Pit. And I think it's going to be soul crushing. 
the Sarlacc Pit, and then the Cold Crush. This is what gives the Crusher and the Tusher its name. The Sarlacc Pit is basically a 4% grade on sand. And then once you're through that, there is no letting up because the Cold Crush, four miles of an average of 10% grade on big chunky gravel is waiting for you on the other side. This course is absolutely ruthless. Coming from a mountain bike background, I know that the steep grindy climbing is a strength of mine. As the riders enter the Sarlacc Pit now, it's Ruth Winder taking over the lead with Haley Smith, Sophia Gomez Vishafane, and Sarah Sturm only seconds behind. Her. I'm still figuring out these races because they're not full gas right off the start. Sophia has exuded confidence all week, so you kind of have to see her as the favorite, but all these riders, they are close enough together that it is still anybody's day out there. It's really going to come down to who has the freshest legs because it is a climb all the way to the finish. I want to win every race that I start, and I've learned through my own successes and failures, if I focus on something like that, if I focus on getting the win, I won't get it. Cresting the top of the Sarlacc pit now, Haley Smith has taken over the lead and she is alone. Ruth Winder is now in second place, 30 seconds behind her. Further back, Sophia and Sarah are fighting for third, two minutes behind Haley Smith. This is a very tough hand being dealt for Sophia. The Sarlacc pit has nearly taken her out of contention for the win. And with the call to crush coming up, if she can't find another gear, she may miss out on the podium altogether. My downfall is that I often grip too tight. I'm being too analytical, too regimented. And Haley Hunter-Smith is having a day, chasing all day, changing leads with Sophia, and now changing leads with Ruth. It'll be interesting to see what she does over the last few miles. And it doesn't leave room for creativity and dreaming and optimism and all the magical elements that come together to build a successful athlete. Here we are now at the top of the Cold to Crush and Haley Smith is leaving the competition in her dust. This is now Haley's race to lose. I'm trying to embody some of that energy that the other women are bringing. Haley is just a few miles away from cinching the win here in Beaver, Utah. And the Grant, Ruth Winder, and Sarah Sturm are all going to be battling for second place and Sophia has completely fallen out of the top group. I'm trying to be more relaxed. I'm trying to lean into this gravel attitude. All right, here she comes. Wow! Just grinding it out. Yeah, you see, she took a little look over the shoulder just to see if she's still in the clear. There you go. Haley Smith, nice work, Haley. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2022 Crusher in the Tusher champion, Haley Hunter Smith. Congratulations to Haley for an incredibly hard fought win. <laughs> if I double down and I focus and I'm super regimented, I can succeed for one weekend, but that's not sustainable. You have to have a little bit of that element of zest for life and for the adventure of what we're doing in order to make this a sustainable thing. Coming in in second place, a full eight minutes behind is Emma Grant. And here is Sarah Sturm climbing her way to the finish. She'll take third, but since Emma isn't in the Grand Prix, Sarah will get those second place points towards the finale. I'm kind of trying to emulate Sarah Sturm a little bit. She's always laughing and very sociable. And I think that's a really nice way to be. And I think it puts you in a good headspace. Ooh, I, just, I just thought I was done racing. I don't know. This season has been crazy. Oh, and I'm so pumped. Ruth Winder hangs on for fourth place. Hannah Otto finishes in seventh. And Sophia ends up taking eighth place, 29 minutes off the lead. Oh you're done. Looks like she was really struggling to keep the pace on that final climb, which is a little bit of a surprise. We'll just have to wait and see if she is able to rebound in time for the next race in the series, the Leadville 100. I've been feeling like shit, like since Oregon. Like, we got to Sarlacc Pit and I was like, this is not good. And normally I could turn it on on the last hour, but not this year. So, uh, yeah, it was fun. So I think someone like Sarah, who can bring more artistry into their approach and their training, I think that's a huge benefit. And I think it 
probably preserves a really positive mental headspace, which is really important for long-term success. Congratulations to our top finishers, and especially to Haley Smith for her first podium and first place finish in the Grand Prix. We're now halfway through the six races, and suddenly the women's field seems a lot tighter than it did yesterday. We'll see you all in a few weeks in Leadville.